Inshallah, we will start in two minutes time. Allah, we will start in two minutes' time. And all right, benefit, all right. And for the benefit of those who would like to share this, uh, I have already shown in the Facebook link okay. of this live session that will happen uh, during the entire presentation. All right. So, so that uh, those who did not join will still be able to uh, access the the talk then via Facebook Live. Copy ni, copy paste je the link. That's right. You can just copy paste the link. Okay. Okay, one more minute, inshallah. Afrik, uh, is that for you from Scotland, from Aberdeen? Okay. Okay. Session and the talk organized and sponsored by Majlis Agama Islam Selangor from the Islamic Information Center. Ahlan wa sahlan, and we hope that we will benefit together in this sharing for uh, during our talk. Together with my other business partner in crime, Puan Jamila. Assalamualaikum. And hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. So, so inshallah, both of us will be sharing with you some of the tips, some of the issues, some of the challenges in terms of raising children. But before, before we dive into the subject, I want to take the opportunity for many of you who have not known about the Islamic Information Center, which is based in Shah Alam, for me to give you a quick glimpse and a snippet of what this organization is all about. So, can you see my slide now, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Okay. So, Majlis uh, Agama Islam Selangor, the Islamic Information Center, is, is started in 2015. So, Without telling you a lot more, I wish to give the opportunity for you to have a look at their corporate video to, so that you can then understand what is this organization is all about then. 
tapusin din yung question ko. Oga, this letter. MIA's Islamic Information Center, MIIC, was established in 2016 as a one-stop center to disseminate Islamic knowledge and culture to Muslims and non-Muslims alike. We provide free guided tours to share and explain Islam as a way of life. A walk through our gallery, equipped with informative audio and visual exhibitions to reveal the Islamic faith. We also extend our activities through Islamic events and celebrations. Our objectives are to share and understand Islam as a way of life, to dispel the misconceptions on Islam, to understand Islamic practices and culture. Our vision is to make the Ma'is Islamic Information Center as a leading one-stop center on Islam. Our mission are to convey the message of Islamic worldview to promote the beauty of Islam, to provide holistic information to travellers, to build strategic networks locally and internationally, and to produce competent volunteers. Among our activities are free gallery guided tour to clarify the misconceptions of Islam, training of volunteers, shahada, open day with multi-religious communities, mu'alaf courses, and others. All of the activities are free of charge. Our visiting hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. from Monday to Sunday. Log on to our Facebook page to find out more at mais.iic. So that was how the overview of the organization. And I think this is a very important, very powerful message for them to promote and convey the beauty of Islam in a holistic, informative manner, not only to local, but especially to the foreigners. Uh, when I came back from my Middle East posting together with my wife, I joined them uh, when they were operating at Masjid Negara to greet visitors who, uh, who wants to know directly about, the, about Islam instead of listening from the media that create Islamic phobia. So the center is there. I'm, I'm sure some of you may have visited, but during this COVID lockdown period, uh, you need to find out more. And the activities has already tried to make Islam a more accessible to those people outside. And more importantly is, is that these are some of the volunteers who are presently together with us that you may want to ask. I think uh, Puan Zawiya, um, who is one of the coordinator here, and they are they strongly uh, desire to have more people to join and be involved in this organization. Then, so with that, thank you, um, Maes. I, I uh, see for giving us the opportunity to share this. And as I said to you earlier, in the next one and a half hour now. For those of you, we will be discussing about the subject and I will provide the initial input on uh, what is it all about. Uh, then Jamila will come in. Um, we will have, inshallah, one more video. Uh, and this is a special video because it is a special occasion also. Uh, and then I will wrap up. And all of you, if anyone would like to ask the question verbally, then you can unmute yourself. Otherwise, you can send your questions through the chat 
And in case any of your colleagues who have, might have not registered and you believe that they, sh they should benefit, I have sent the Facebook link uh, where it is now being on the stream live at the moment. And obviously you can share then. So, can I share? so I think that will help for especially the new ones so that you can copy and paste and uh, Jamila will then uh, recopy with that then. So with that, let me now uh, proceed to our discussion um, as what we have already been aware uh, in terms of why we are here and, and there is a need uh, for us to enhance our skills then. So first and foremost, yeah, the topic on the, on the table now, on the air now virtually is on leadership in parenting. Why are we now talking about the subject? And I think this is a very critical subject now because we are talking about the future generation. We are the generation that is going to shape the humanity in future because we are entrusted. We are given the amanah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I, I think I want to take one step back before we dive into the subject is to talk about what I call some of the priorities in life. There's a lot of priority in life, but I think to make it a very simple and much more easily understandable, uh, I've come up with this 5F, and you can see a lot of people also talk about it. Um, number one is your faith, your belief system, the philosophy that is guiding your life so that it can be a purpose, purposeful life, inshallah ta'ala. So faith to me is even in the Quran, it's described like, like a tree with the strength and the foundation of its root that kept it upright despite whatever uh, strong environment externally, it will be uh, standing firm on the ground. And I think that's a very important uh, for all of us and if some of you who may join this, whether you're Muslim or not, uh, it is uh, an essential part that will uh, guide us to the right way. I think the next thing is, is that uh, the important thing in our life is our family, whether we are married or not. It could be our own parents, our own sibling as we grow up. Uh, and some of us has friends also. Uh, and obviously, if you are married, then you'll start a new life with your spouse and your children. And for me, having um, married to Jamila for the last 37 years, Alhamdulillah, and also we having now six children, six children, yeah, two, two, two was, were born in uh, Sarawak, and then one born in Johor when I moved to Port Dixon in my job. Uh, and then uh, I moved to change my career and Jamila changed her career also. And we have two more boys. So now we have five uh, by that time. And when I went for our cross posting in the Middle East, uh, we had one more boy. So my advice, if any of you want lots of children, then maybe it's a good idea to start moving about uh, to then have a different air and environment. Because I think for many of us, this family is a very important. They are gifts. If you take it as, a, as something which is a, a load for you, sebagai bebanan, then you will not enjoy. But if you look at the gift, then Alhamdulillah, Allah is going to uh, help you in this. I think I put fitness uh, ahead because I, I believe that fitness is an important element. Uh, I'm a cancer survivor. And I knew that I will not be talking to you had Allah not given me the second chance in my life to make that change. Yeah, if, uh, you, you, if, if you are not fit, because to me, your health is your greatest wealth, is your true wealth, in fact, so that then you can ibadah, you can give your deeds, and so forth then. And, 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 and obviously, the, the, the one that I wanted to uh, highlight is also um, the point of uh, finance. It's, it's, an, it's an important element because 
finance uh, is mentioned in the Quran, zakat and salat, you know, it's like together. So Allah gives you whatever uh, material is for you then to be able to test you and uh, to make you a, a charitable person where you share this gift or this uh, money or uh, charity that you were given away to those who are in need. I mean, Allah could have given straight to those people, but they give to you so that you can uh, give to the, those people and it benefits the, in the chain link. And, and the other F that I thought was important is, is that each and every one of us has something unique to, to offer. I told my six children that there is two important days in your life. The day you are born and the second is the day you discover why you are born. That is the fulfillment that you will have to give before you meet Allah to tell that this is the jaria. This is the thing that I am. So the three things, again, ladies and gentlemen, that I wanted to summarize. One third of it, what do you do with the knowledge that you have, the aim that you will give out? Second is the money that you would be spending. And the third element is the children. So if you have your children, they are the one who continues the next generation. So let's now go back to the Quran and ask ourselves, what is it that in the Quran that give us the objective or the guidance in terms of what is the purpose of us raising children? Um, I, I welcome anyone to put on the chat. Can you just type in what is the purpose of you? Uh, what is the purpose of you of we about raising children? And then uh, why why are we raising them? Anyone? Can anyone just type in there? There's 27 of us here, inshallah. Why is it? Hmm. If you're not keen to type, maybe you can say it out. So unmute yourself. I'm okay with that also. Anyone? I hope, yes. So we got one person who gave the check, Knapper. Okay, it's Amana Allah. Okay, Puan Zawiya, I know this is, um, Allah is entrusting us. So when this is the Amana from Allah, it is a gift from Allah. Then when someone gives you a gift, then you have to keep it. And when you have it as an amana, you got to keep your amana. You know, so children are not something that will uh, not make life difficult for you. Anyone else? What do you think? Of why we are having children? What is the purpose for, for us to raise our children? Hmm. Okay. Investment for akhirah. Okay. I think, uh, inshallah, yeah, that is uh, important, Shafiq. Investment for akhirah. Yes, I mentioned to you just now. Uh, and, and, and Mia MIA talks about the function in uh, that surah 51 56. Uh, is that the uh, surah about uh, that I have not created you, but to become the servant or jinn and a human being. Yes, to serve Allah. Indeed, uh, Nadira talks about uh, making it as a, a caliph. Yeah, being a khalifa. And uh, Nick Roslina said it's about part of jihad. And, and I think all of it is true. But I think if you refer back to the Quran and partly what uh, Nadira has mentioned, um, I wanted us to now reflect this in relation to uh, what Allah has mentioned in Surah Al-Furqan. Yes. Uh, Surah Al-Furqan, uh, Allah described in a very beautiful way, which is in the form of dua. It is not in the form of instruction. Let, let's say, that, oh man, uh, find your spouses, get offspring uh, who will make you happy, and then you, know, you must uh, make them to become lead, righteous leader. MashaAllah, Allah gave it in the form that some of you will be reciting this dua. Rabbana, hablana. So it's hab. 
grant me so we ask allah give me and grant me min azwajina which is spouses your wife or your husband wa zurriyatina and the offspring qurrati ayun and this is a, a metaphor that allah mentioned that your spouse and your children will be cool for your eyes is comfort to you and lil so that lil muttaqi na imama so so that that it will give us the grace to lead the righteousness so i think this is a uh, very much clearly link with the dialogue between allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to and, and the malaika when he wanted to create human being because he wants to have a khalifa so again and again when uh, together jamila and i during one of our talk in towards uh, in 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 uk when we were traveling in the train in london so i was saying to many people you know i was reflecting many people asked the question about you know we having lots of gadget problem we having lots of discipline problem we have issues with children uh, not wanting to practice islam and wanting to do and we were so busy we were busy working trying to get food we were so busy uh, mashallah trying to protect them give them clothes and everything but that just keeping us busy to make them alive but more importantly is what we can do to make them in what the spirit of uh, islam making them as the khalifa for for the ummah for the humanity so now that we know the purpose that is it how so jamila and i uh, through the our latest jamila's book called a uh, leadership in parenting in this book we came up with a model the model that we call the hierarchy of successful parenting and i i think it's a bit heavy but i think it's important that if we know the purpose and the ultimate goal for us to raise children who become leaders for the ummah then we need to know what is our role as parents what is our function now before i i describe the rest i need to clarify this because uh, at one time i was asked by a japanese uh, 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 a mother in japan uh, in chiba and she asked she might i don't know whether my son can become a leader or not because i don't see anything in him so then i said to her and to the crowd that we cannot just think the definition of leader only to become the prime minister or the ceo or md of the company that's one definition but i want us to widen the definition to they are leaders in their own field you know the areas that they are strong with i mean the uh, uh, jackie ng the lady who is a biotech specialist in singapore that led the nanotechnology there she is in a leader in her own field and she reverted to islam that's a very powerful message of a leader and but i said to her if you do not see her the boy or the your children having any of those position then we need to train our children to have the leadership qualities there are so many leadership qualities being truthful being firm integrity honesty and this is what happened in the time of khalifa umar al khattab when he was traveling at the night listening to the girl talking to the mother why are we not do it why are we we mixing the milk and the water to sell this uh, milk and umar would know but the girl said the creator of umar would know these are the powerful character that we as parents needs to build so moving on with this hierarchy that i wanted to mention is the first foundation is the marriage that to me is one of the most fundamental success criteria of us building this and raising these children mashallah you remember that allah created uh, our father adam alai salam in jannah and then when adam felt that uh, allah knew that adam needs a companion 
Allah did not create Hawa immediately. He wants Adam to feel the need of partnership. And he created Hawa in Jannah. And remember, yeah, the children were not created in Jannah. They were created on earth. But it is to show that how sacred the union of men and women because, mashallah, it is created in Jannah because what we want is, is that it will also end up in Jannah. Me, you and your spouse living up to this, uh, raising this family. So when you got your children, therefore your next job is to provide the physical need, whether it's food, whether it's protection, security and the house. It's your, our obligation. And Allah mentioned it also. You know, when you need the, why, why you need the house? Because when you have the boys and girls, you need to put them in different rooms. So that's, therefore, the, the need of this physical, giving them diet food. I also want to highlight that, and again, in, in probably when the time opportunity is, how can you become a good connector, connecting them holistically? So Jamila will talk about the several dimensions uh, so that then you play that role. The, 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 the example of, mashallah, Luqmanul Hakim, try uh, making sure that not only connect at spiritual level, but also at the intellectual level. This is very important because for some of us, we intellectually, we said we don't know a lot of things we give to the teachers. But at the end of the day, we ourselves are responsible to this amana. And then moving on, we are the developer of the strength that I mentioned to you that they have discovered. We allow them uh, to discover what they are good at. We allow them to harness and polish their skills. I mean, my six children are all different. Uh, some not sure what they want to be. Um, one of them are so sure, but still wanting to make sure whether, can, or whether she should become an artist or a doctor. And the other wasn't sure what would be the right uh, career. But irrespective of what it is, we empowered our children with guidance, understanding, as well as equip them with the wisdom of choosing what would be the good thing for them. And with that, then, we continue to inspire them to become the leaders. Because in the end, what is it? If you just become an engineer, just become a doctor, you see, uh, I knew Asian parent uh, is what we call the deal. D-E-A-L. You must become either doctor, engineer, accountant, or architect, or lawyer. And, and the children nowadays felt that, you know, I, I want to do something different. And you would say that guide them. What can you, what can they impact the ummah then, inshallah. So inspiring them is our job. And I think, inshallah ta'ala, if you have given your best, and after, I'm going to hand over to Jamila now to, prob to go deeper into the subject so that then uh, as we go along, feel free to ask any question, throw in your views and thoughts so that inshallah, you would be able to benefit from this session then. Uh, so with that, let me pass on to Jamila to then proceed with the session. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. And welcome again, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. Very happy to be here today with you. Now to <clears throat> continue what Amal Fakri has shared just now, I'd like to talk about the stages of marriage. Why is this important? Why are we talking about marriage when we are supposed to be talking about parenting? The reason is because the state of your marriage, whether your marriage is stable, whether there's a lot of conflict in your marriage, it actually has a big impact on your capability to lead your children, to successfully guide your children okay so very quickly if we look at uh, from here there are actually two trajectories you can see the two trajectories um, from the honeymoon stage beginning in the honeymoon stage 
and the one that is going up towards everlasting love, right? And the other one going down towards separation. And what I want to point out here is that how do you... Can't hear properly. Can't hear properly. Okay. Just... Can, you hear... Can you hear me properly now? Uh, is, okay. is yes, it... can. Yes, okay. can hear. Thank you. Okay. All right. So again, we are talking about the two trajectories and on, uh, on marriage, right? The one going up towards everlasting love, that's what you want as much as possible. And the one going down towards separation, you want to avoid that. And one of the critical component of a successful marriage, of a, a very stable marriage is having a shared dream. And I would like to urge you to have a shared dream in raising your children, raising them as leaders, right? And that happened to me when I was growing up, my parents, my mom and my dad, they had a shared dream of growing successful children, right? In a stable marriage. My late father, Arwah Abba, was a bus driver and my mom was a homemaker. And despite his meager income, my father used to buy new straight times. Now that was, I know that that's not a big deal today, but you have to consider that when you are earning not much, that is quite a lot of money. So that began when I was about at the age of 14 or 15. And there was this column uh, by Adibah Amin. And I love that column, right? And I told myself that I'm going to write just like Adibah Amin. Sri Delima, one of these days. It planted the seed of an idea. And my mom was also equally very strong in terms of um, making sure that her kids, all five children, focus on education. So you can see how despite the differences, and believe me, every couple, every husband and wife would have differences. But how you manage that differences, that is the key, right? So when you talk about your sharing, and you know how to deal with children and all what you want to achieve in the future that actually will reduce the differences that you have for now okay now just to very quickly mention the distance and the cracks and the separation because in every marriage there will be distancing the work the children the in-laws that is going to push you apart from one another. So it is important for you to work on your marriage, understand yourself, understand your, uh, your spouse, and see how you can minimize this distancing. There are seven domains that I want to highlight here. When we are raising children, right? What do we focus on? If you are new to the word domains, maybe you can think of it as um, components or elements, right? So these are sister words. What are the domains or elements or components that we have to think of? We have to think of when we raise children. There are seven here that I would like to share with you. And the most important, the number one that has to come before everything else is the spiritual. The spiritual component or domain is a basis for everything because that is where the values belief system comes from of course it depends yeah if you are not uh even for those of you who are not muslim you would have your own spiritual um reference points if you're a christian you refer to the bible practicing christian for that matter so know what your spiritual basis is in islam yeah allah says in the quran bismillahirrahmanirrahim and indeed you, Muhammad, are of exalted character. What does it mean to us as parents? It means that we would refer to the Prophet as a reference point, as the number one reference on how to raise children, on how to deal with people, on how to manage our relationships. And when you talk about parenting, actually, um, my dear brothers and sisters, it is actually a lot about 
managing relationships with your spouse, with your in-laws, with your children. And when we talk about spiritual, how do we embed? How do we inculcate? How do we develop the spiritual domain in the child? Be sensitive about the ages and stages, about the temperament of children, because Believe me, not all children are the same. So understanding your child is so important. Let me share with you what I saw one day. This is some years ago before we had the PKP, before we had the MCO. I was in this beautiful masjid and I saw this mother with a young child, probably around three and a half years old. And this mother was spending time showing the child how to take Udo, right? She was not rushing. And when she was doing it, you could see from her face, she liked doing it. And you can see from the child's face how much she liked what her mother was doing. No wiping the water on the face, on the hands. It's really a beautiful sight to behold. Why am I sharing with you this story? Because when we are in the process of spiritually growing our child, it might not mean sitting them down and telling them what is this, what is that. It could be an experiential thing. And what this mother was doing is she was very wise. She used association of ideas. In fact, if you are used to doing this with little children, when you pray with them, I know little babies can be very annoying, right? When you are doing your sujo and they climb all over you instead of pushing them away, when you're trying to stand up, be very gentle with it. And you can even hold them when you are praying so that they have very nice memories. And for little children, the age of four, five, six, seven, mind your expectations. If they just do, you know, the beginning and they're able to do one rakaat for young children, hug them and don't complain. Always catch them doing right. Intellectual, all right? The intellectual domain. We have in our tradition, the Islamic tradition, look at what the grandfather of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdul Muttalib himself. You know, when Abdul Muttalib was already eight years old, he was taking care of the Nabi, the Prophet, whose age was about seven years old. And when, when Abdul Muttalib had the leaders, the leaders, um, in Makkah, he and he would allow Muhammad to sit together with the rest of the leaders. And not just that, but went beyond that. He would ask the Prophet, right? Sorry, Abdul Muhammad, he would ask his grandfather. Just, just one moment, I need to mute this. Uh, Sorry about that. We there was some um, noise in the in Thank the you. background, and I got distracted. So yeah, we had to mute the participants. All right. So what happened was that in this case, the grandfather of the prophet Abdul Muttalib, what he would do was that he would allow the prophet, and the prophet was only seven to eight years old, to sit together with the leaders, and not only that, he would ask for the prophet. Um, prophet's opinion, right? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? So it's not just about observing. It's also about asking the child what he thinks of that experience. So you see, it's really a deliberate thing intellectually when you want to, when you want to develop leaders, yeah? And from other sources, from empirical sources, we know that Benjamin Franklin also did something similar. In his case, Benjamin Franklin, for all those uh, who don't know who Benjamin Franklin is, he's a very uh, famous author, inventor. Um, as well as inventor. inventor. Yeah, thank you, Ranaji Ahmad. What he used to do, he wanted to develop intelligence in his children. So what he did was he would invite intellectuals, right, smart people to his home, and he would have a discussion and he would ask his children to sit and observe. So you can see how it's very deliberate. It's not something that happens by accident. And Benjamin Franklin's children did not know that their father did that deliberately so that they could 
listen into the conversation. They are actually the audience of the interaction between Benjamin Franklin and his associates. The other um, domain that I would like to mention is the, the cultural domain, right? And I feel that this is so important because we know that men and women, we are created differently. And this ayat in Surah Al-Hujurat, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa unta wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qawba'ida li ta'arafu. Indeed, we, God, have created men and women, right? And God have created us human beings from different nations and tribes but the first thing that he mentioned is men and women and to me it means that men and women yes we do have differences and differences are bound to happen naturally coming from different families coming from different tribes let us instead of focusing on the differences we focus on what we can learn what we can benefit from the richness of the differences and from there, inshallah, our children will also see how Islam actually enhances the values that we find in our culture. Next, I would like to share with you the early childhood brain development. This is so important for us to understand because we know that you know, whether a person is smart or not, it has a lot to do with the brain development. And I'm often asked, how do you raise smart children? Well, we have to know what happens to their brain in the earliest. If you see here, the first three to four years are critical for early language acquisition and intelligence. You can see in this graph, from the age of five, six below, right? There is this very rapid brain development that takes place. Synapses grow, the brain, real, the brain wires, gets wired, and a lot of things actually take place. The emotional control, language development, uh, habitual ways of responding. Habitual ways of responding means whether you are very, very shy or whether you, know, you like to lash out or whether you are able to be calm and interact in a positive manner in other, uh, towards other people. Your hearing, your vision. So be very careful how you interact with your children. There is an, a very easy way to, um, I mean, apart from giving them very good food, because food is actually very important for our health, all right? Especially in terms of brain health, what, what we eat, right? So make sure that your kids don't have too much of sugar, even from young. It's good, even if they don't like vegetables, just ask them to have a little bit. One time, the other time, three times, four times, five times, until they are used to it. And, uh, the, the, the evidence, there is a large evidence saying that, proving that just mere exposure, merely exposing children to vegetables and the food that they feel that they don't like, can gradually change their mind to try what they do not like, right? So when you touch, when you talk, and when you, you know, it's even singing, when, when, you, when you hold your child, look into their eyes, and when you uh, berzikir with them, do all kinds of things, that actually is brain food. It's positive interactions. It's the words, the gestures, and the touch, Children need that. It's not just the food. Don't think that, okay, I've fed them enough. I'll put them in one corner. Let them just take care of themselves. No, especially when they are young, it's the interaction, yeah? I just want to mention in particular speech because we know that these days, kids grow up with a lot of gadgets and there are cases where kids have delayed speech development because their parents just pass the gadgets to them. Speech is something that, you know, kids need to hear, need to interact with adults, with people who stretch their vocabulary so that they become smart. Assalamualaikum, Puan, can I just ask a question? Yes, Puan. Okay, um, you were mentioning about gadgets. 
I just want to know roughly for children um, aged between seven to 13, let's say, for example, what is the recommended gadget use on a daily basis? I mean, the pediatrician says 30 minutes a week for games. So we want to know how we can control that. Thank I you. Know. Yeah, thank you, Puan, for the very quick question. We do not have any evidence that we can share with you right now, but the key word here is supervision, all right? Because it is true that, um, you know, when you use gadget, when the Wi-Fi, the internet is available, there are some issues here. And one of the most important thing is the issue of pornography, right? Uncontrolled media where there are pop-ups that shows all kinds of images. And if you are not there to control the gadget, you don't know what your child will see. So be careful with that. And also, we are not saying that gadget is bad, right? The bottom line is that gadget is just like a knife. It's a tool. It can help. It can harm people. Whether it's half an, uh, half an hour to me, off the top of my head, half an hour for a seven-year-old sounds very reasonable, all right? Just, yeah, just, just be sure that you keep to that, all right? So, yeah. But we will important. touch, yeah. yeah. We will touch this subject, gadget, because I know a lot of it is in the mind of the parents when we go uh, in the question and answer session a short while later, but... If you could wait. Yeah, yeah. so we will touch right. a bit more. Okay, so moving on, and we'll come back to this. And to this if people question. can start asking questions through the chat also, so yeah. that we can see what are some of the common issues. Yeah. So moving on um, to teens, teens and preteens. What do you need to know about preteens? Preteens at the age of 11, 12, teenagers are older, 13, 14, 15. We have older teens, we have younger teens. We have to be mindful of the changes that they go through. To be honest, well, we all go through, we experience the physical, emotional changes. We know our body change. We know the hormones are raging, but well, we forget, okay? So the most important thing for parents, for educators to know is that we can see the growth spurt, but more importantly, what happens to the child here in the mind. This is a window of opportunity. What do I mean by that? You see, when our children go through adolescence, they are going through a period of big change. They begin to ask about their identity, who am I? Why am I born? What is my purpose here? All right. And because of the huge changes, the brain gets rewired. Those parts that are not being used, it gets snipped away and new uh, synapses begins to grow. So this is a good time for you to connect with your teenager and preteens, especially if you have not been doing that, right? And although, yes, we do hear about people complaining it's so difficult to talk to teenagers, you know, for teenagers, if they feel that you care about them, they will connect with you, right? But there are ways and means to connect with teenagers. It's not necessarily sitting down, a big talk, a big lecture, no. It could be just a matter of them talking to you, telling, and you acknowledging, oh, I see. I see, what, that's what happened. Really, things like that. You know, just short, short responses from you that can go a long way towards developing the parent-child relationship between you and your child and simultaneously makes you a better leader for your child. Now, next we have, okay, diamonds in the rough. What do we mean by this? Every child has potential. Right? And we know that as parents, we have this avana, we have this trust to raise them as leaders. And this is one issue, soft love, tough love, that my husband and I often get asked. Because I came from the time, and I'm sure many of you can relate to what I'm saying. Many of us came, uh, you know, we grew up in an environment where it was called tough love. You know, salah sikit je, maybe you can be spanked. So, does tough love still exist? 
Well, in the first place, what does soft love mean? And what does good parenting require us to do? You see, effective parenting, good parenting is all about balance. Soft love, tough love. Soft love is when you connect with them without the elements of conflict. But do we still need tough love? I would say, yes, tough love. But how you show it is different. All right? Because research has proven that when children are raised with harsh parenting, it actually impacts the brain. Children who have been raised in very harsh circumstances, they are beaten often and hit often, their brains tend to get smaller as they grow up. So be mindful of that. What tough love today means is saying no when you have to. Saying no in a very firm way. So I would say in a nutshell, when we raise leaders, we need to be kind, we need to be respectful, and we need to be firm when need be. What does this mean to you and me? This means that we have to make ourselves present. We have to catch them doing something right, right? I remember, let me share with you a very short uh, anecdote of what happened to me um, early on when I myself was looking for meaning to raise my own children. I had a lot of problems and that actually brought me to parenting. It's not because I want to teach people or correct people. It's because I had my own issues. And I realized that I love to correct my children when they did wrong. All right. So if you did try to catch them doing right, and this is a reverse psychology, and trust me, it works, right? Because children tend to pay attention to what tend to do. They tend to repeat actions or words that we pay attention to, right? So pay attention to that. There are also ways of disciplining children from consequences, uh, from time out, I personally have not used time out, but I do know there are some parents who use time out. And there is also the one to three magic way. You can find out more from Dr. Michael Thielen, which Thomas has Thielen. Dr. Thomas Thielen, one to three magic. It's also useful to some parents. But of course, at the end of the day, we can't really use any strategy, any technique without understanding the child because there is no one size that fits all when you want to raise children. So bottom line is, yes, we need to have both soft love and tough love, but tough love does not mean hitting, spanking your child. So in a nutshell, just to wrap up what I have, what I have shared with you just now, how do we engage with our young leaders, with our children, right? At the time of the Prophet, again, we refer to the Prophet, وسلم, one day he visited his grandsons, Hassan and Hussein, and Hassan went to him and asked for some water. So the Prophet went away, got some water. When he got back to Hassan, Hussein, the younger boy, insisted that he wanted the water. But the Prophet said no. And Fatima, the mother of the boys, who was there, made a comment that, wow, her son is a favorite of yours. Because Hussein is younger, and normally what do we do? When a younger one asks for something, bagilah, kasihan, you know, never mind. Mangalah, yulah mm -hmm. bang. So the prophet said, no. It's because Hassan asked for it first. What can we learn from this incident? Narration about the prophet. Number one, how to engage with young leaders. You have to treat them with justice, with respect, honest, open conversation. You have to clarify. And if you keep that respect open and available, they will trust you very, very much. They will like you and you will become the hero on the, in their lives, inshallah. So Alhamdulillah, thank you very much, uh, Puan Jabila, for that uh, sharing and enlightenment in terms of continuously trying to develop leaders now. 
you, you know what? I'm so happy in this uh, session. We got about more than 30 over people, and I could see a lot of um, fathers around. And mashallah, with these latest things, uh, we could see lots of fathers involved. And because of that, I wanted to uh, share with you this um, very interesting uh, two minutes video. And this is in relation to father. And I know some of you might have watched this uh, movie, uh, this little uh, video clip. But if you have watched it, I want you to watch now with the lens of what do you think you could learn from this person. And for those who have not watched this, it's also something for you to reflect on whether can you do what the person is doing uh, in this example that has been given. So let's, uh, let's uh, take some time to watch this. Um... I'm going to forward it because I know uh, it's trying to save some time. Okay. Oh, my Lord, my sins are like the highest mountain. My good deeds are very few, they're like a small pebble. of shame, my eyes full of tears, bestow your forgiveness and mercy upon me. Oh my Lord, my sins are like the highest mountain my good deeds for very few they're like a small pebble I turn to you my heart full of shame my eyes full of tears bestow your forgiveness and mercy upon me yeah Allah send your peace and blessings Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have seen this video numerous times, and this video has certainly struck a very soft spot on me, uh, being a man, uh, being a father, a husband. Can anyone just put in the chat or verbalize uh, what is so profound about this? Apa unique gambar video? Anyone? Uh, just to see what some of the things that came to your mind. I'm okay for like, you. Sorry, uh, go ahead. I like to say something. Yes, go ahead. Okay, despite the the kecacatan yang ada in his in himself itself, but he doesn't stop him from being the perfect father. Yeah. He's I, imperfect. He's imperfect. Tapi to the to the child, he's perfect. And sedang saya cakap ni saya jadi sebab sebab ayah saya ada depan saya. Uh, Cik, I think this is a very true and uh, because we reflect on what this person is doing versus how Allah has given all the bounty to all of us, kan? Uh, keistimewaan yang ada pada kita. But the point I wanted to highlight when uh, we, we saw that this is an OKU, betul tak? For most of betul. us, we say these are OKU. 
But saya nak mendefinasikan this OKU bukannya sebagai orang kurang upaya. Uh, saya ingin memberi tuan-tuan dan puan-puan a new definition of OKU. Which is sebenarnya sama ada orang kelainan upaya ataupun orang kuat upaya. So that is how Allah mercy has given and blessed to all uh, everyone in their own manner. So any other person? I, I just uh, I want to hear some men. Father, what do you think of this example that you saw? Uh, anyone just drop in the chat kalau kalau ada i came to okay. point okey ah cik minta maaf it's me again sorry eh yeah, go cuma ahead. cuma saya rasa dalam kita punya journey ni we always give emphasis to mom it's always about mom tapi daripada segi uh, daddies and and fathers out there kurang dia punya emphasis so this video says it all as well alhamdulillah And uh, uh, Puan or J, I, I'm glad that you, you we noticed that because when we celebrate Mother's Day, there will be a lot of mothers. And when we celebrate Father's Day, there are still a lot of mothers. And where are the fathers? All of this. So I I I, I knew it, and 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 you, you could see that in this uh, video, um, The man is actually showing four different roles, yeah, four different roles. So that's my comment now. The first is is that he still earn his living and being a professional despite what we from ourselves see as limitation. Macam mana dia naik bus kalau bus tu break? Macam mana dia pegang? And all these sorts of questions shows that the man is a responsible person who knows his role and his duty. Next picture, which I think I hope some of the men would have captured. What was the picture again? Can anyone say what was the next scene? This is the most interesting one. The scene yang dia pegang, he is holding the wok, periuk ada kuali itu dengan dia punya kaki jari dia in order to help the wife. And I can imagine, I mean, Uh, when the when the i mean the fathers can just give excuse yang ada tangan pun kata ah penat ah uh, ini kerja orang perempuan and all those things but he demonstrate his certainly interest and 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 affection to the wife and help the wife and then the next scene which is the third one was him helping the children again ask ourselves how many times do we just only ask question homework dah siap uh, apa dah buat pdpr dah buat and, and, and that kind of questions and yet this father shows that how he wants to connect with the children before they grow up and how he values knowledge and last but not least him being a muslim him him doing his duties And the one that really struck me, masa dia ambil wuduk tu, when he was taking his wuduk, even I, one of the things that struck my conscience was, he took time to bersugi, which means he took the siwak using his feet and then he just brushed it off. How many of us trying to apply the sunnah of the prophet? So again and again, uh, it's a short two-minute clip, but it gives a lot of... Uh, a lot of pengajaran a lot of ibrah a lot of lesson for us to ask ourselves are we inshallah performing our duty so i wanted to uh, before i uh, uh, allow any question and answer shortly uh, in the book uh, jamila and i in this leadership in parenting uh, yeah for zawiya in spite of okay you dad orang kuat upaya yet show the best dad of the world Every dad has his own speciality. Every dad, walaupun dia tak bercakap banyak, walaupun dia hanya uh, sebut dengan beberapa patah perkataan, tapi kadang-kadang itulah yang tersemat and terpahat, very strong in our heart. You know, I mean, fathers in nature, I have seen a lot of feedback and remarks from many people, especially the children, and say that my dad don't talk a lot. My dad, you know, they just have time. I mean, Jamila's dad 
pergi before the sunrise, came back home after the sunset as a bus driver. When is the time for them to meet their children? And they work seven days a week. Kalau tak kerja, tak ada makan. Uh, and now we in the PKP, banyak masa. So did we take the time, uh, Masha Allah, to have this, uh, to dash this opportunity? And again, Brother Muhammad Noor mentioned this is, it's a, it's a physical shortcoming, but again, it is not a due, an excuse. And a lot of us uh, should not uh, take any excuse uh, again and again. As I said and reminded myself personally, this video has touched a lot of us yang so-called ta okay you, tapi adakah kita, do we ourselves perform the duty? So let me just uh, move on onto this a simple metric because I think the big picture helps many parents to understand how the development and how the children is. So I wanted to mention the top part which young, you all tak nampak sangat too because it's, there is a bar there. It's proactive, purposeful parenting approach. So I stop and then I... Uh, so, um, the whole idea is for you to know that our children, they grow in stages, they are developed in the different condition. And Puan Jamila already mentioned that at the younger age, the brain has been developed. And so if you look at the stage one, and when they are uh, at the age of zero to six, and we, we, we mentioned the zero to six, seven to uh, 13, so there's about seven years and many people attribute to Sadina Ali. I'm not sure because some said it's not, but nonetheless, when we know the each segment and the stages of the children, it helps us to position. So again, what are we trying to raise now? We are trying to raise leaders. For what? For the benefit of the Ummah. Because why? We are Khaira Ummah, because we are the best nation that Allah has created. That is what, how we need to embed to the DNA of our Muslim youngsters. So the, the need to do it is at the beginning, at the young age, zero to six. So you jadi apa? You jadi pengasuh or nurturer. And this is the time when the brain is being developed. You want to connect them with the domain yang Jamila mentioned spiritually, emotionally, physically though, is to spend time with them. So you do things with them and you show it with them together. So it not necessarily um, just to up, be upset and say, kenapa toy ni masih bersepa? Maybe it's time to do it together and say, let's count how many toys that we can put in this basket. So there is a lot of learning that kita boleh buat, nurturing their understanding. And, and the other thing is, is that for me, I did ask my children, what is the legacy that remember about me when they were at a young age? So I asked my children when they have grown up, they are teen, they are married now, they have children now, and each and every one of them, the elder says, Ayah, it is when the time you, you, we know you are busy, came back home about Maghrib time in those days, and then I still spend time for bedtime story and also the time for zikir. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And then we do it together, and then I ask the, the first one to do, okay, it's alung time, and then the angah time. So then they repeat together. So these are some of the things. And big time storytelling, mashallah, there's so many important figures of Islam leaders that you can introduce in the Islamic big time story, the story of the Khalif the story of Umar Abdul Aziz, the story of uh, the conqueror of Constantinople, and a lot more, uh, Rubai bin Amir, the conqueror who came to Persia. MashaAllah, these are our icon and the one that we can. Moving forward to the 7 to 13, now you start to coach the children. Because why? This is the time where the Prophet says that, ajarlah mereka uh, untuk solat. But at already at the early age that they're already being exposed, you want to embed them values, knowledge, and skill. And therefore, your role is to download the apps, the apps of how to become human being. And I think, inshallah, this is where you do a lot of exposure. And for me, 
um, one of Jamila's book, Cool Mom Super Dad, uh, she wrote about six thinking hacks where we introduce the family in terms of how to make decision. So instead of you always try to impose it, inshallah, you use that methodology. 14 years now where the children become teens, if, I, if you have not done your role to become nurturer and coach, then this is the age where there will be challenges when you communicate with them. If you have done your job, they will become your friend because this is where you now will, they will see to start looking at outside world in terms of comparing the opposite gender. They are looking for some role model and hopefully you are their first line of defense and also not only the last line of defense, but you become their role model, inshallah. And uh, that's where, in my case, I advocated to many uh, uh, fathers, especially when you want to talk to your children, don't do it openly sangat for some specific areas. You can ask questions. Uh, misalanya, uh, you want them to talk, so be a speaker uh, at the younger age to allow them to be assertive. But now when they move to the 14 to 21, inshallah, be a mentor to them and help them to understand. So I encourage you to have a one-on-one -on -one session with your children, uh, with the boys. Do not go and start attacking the things that you want to say to them. Kenapa ni, kenapa ni? But start with a warm, start with a very positive mind. Uh, commend them. Beri kepujian kepada mereka dan kemudian you go on with other things that you want to raise insyaAllah. And the other thing I always do after the prayer now with PKP, we always make it like almost mandatory now after Maghrib to be watching any of the videos, the tafsir of the Quran, the documentary, the, the information which we want the children. So now they can see we as an example using the gadget in a positive manner. Even with my grandchildren, the six-year-old girl, I will sit down beside her and then we'll say, this is about animals, Allah punya kejadian, and we're going to look at bagaimana Allah menjadikan um, uh, octopus boleh berubah dengan uh, warna di dalam air to protect themselves. So we can learn from the animal kingdom. So I think it's a guided one kalau you nak be able to see the children use this gadget in a proper manner, we have to set an example. We have to give the right time. The other thing in the book called uh, 123 Ideas uh, of uh, Raising uh, Gen Y and Z, I think we mentioned to start a golden hours to the children. So beyond the 22, when they finish their uni, I think we still uh, become an advisor to our children, inshallah, they will come back to us not only about looking for jobs, not only about looking for their future spouse, not only looking for uh, how they want to manage their life. Uh, this is where we continue to become their source of reference then. So that's how I could see the whole big picture. And uh, inshallah, some of my plans that I do with my children uh, when they were smaller, I knew I had to plan daily. Uh, weekly and monthly and what is the priority in the months we've got only four weekends and some have been taken up with lots of sports activities and school activities and company activities but one of the strong strength that i wanted to impose is, is that we will find time to visit the grandparents and and, and in order to make them feel grateful Bersyukur with what they have been given, we will be visiting orphanages. I brought them to also the old folks' home in Kajang, uh, Jalan Semeni, so that they could see. The book shopping is something that we bring. I asked my children when uh, as early as six to seven years old, when we do go out together into the bookstore and we said to them, everyone got a budget of 50 ringgit, go and buy the book. Once you are happy with that book, you come and see me and I will approve in terms of the payment. But if it's not enough, then try to influence your sibling so that you can combine your money to buy a bit more expensive. So those are some of the little, little things that I want you to do, but not when we say spend time, especially for fathers, just to sit together, but you are with your gadget.
this has been one of the challenge and the issue that we faced. And uh, I wanted to end up uh, some simple rapport building uh, with children. So why do you want to start rapport with the children? Because at the end of the day, you need to have trust with them. One, if you can, as parents and me, I'm, I'm a very serious person and I know my wife reminded me quite a lot of time to smile at the children because the smile makes them feel at ease so that then that will help them to feel that they want to connect with you. The next one is, is that you want to be able to smile, to say salam uh, to them, give salam. Uh, and the salam is shows denote the intonation of your voice, uh, whether it's a short version, salam, salam alaikum, or you go, salam alaikum rahmatullah. And that's where the, the greeting uh, that you would like to make for the children to build your relationship. Say something, and this is where uh, the prophets of uh, Islam, the, even Nabi Ibrahim and Nabi Yaqub and even Luqman, they say, ya bunaya. So the endearing um, statement of calling the child sends a lot of meaning to your children. So, I mean, I uh, uh, the children called me with the uh, Norman, uh, Norman name of calling, but you could add on, MashaAllah, Jazakallah, and start with a positive one. Because we fathers, just like one of my friends, came back from his LCE results, dapat uh, result uh, BMA, Bahasa Inggeris A, Sejarah A, Mathematics A, Science semua A, 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 sampai bawah B. And you know what was the first thing the father asked? Kenapa B? And you know what does the child punya heart says without trying to be rude to the father? Papa, ayah tak nampak ke A yang di atas tu? Kenapa yang ditanya itu B? Raihkanlah mereka dengan sebaiknya because salah satu daripada usaha mendekatkan diri sebelum mereka finally fly away. The sense of touch, I know Jamila has mentioned about it, but do not underestimate this because some children did not feel that they are getting that love uh, from their parents, uh, fathers especially. I, I just want to ask you, how many of you really hug your children? Um, our only son, uh, youngest, stayed with us. And Alhamdulillah, every lepas solat, we will not only salam, but we will hug them. And uh, Jamila will always make dua, Allah fakih fi deen. And these are the opportunity, the moment that they feel that they are being appreciated because touch is an important element. And then finally, santunilah mereka dengan sopan with a positive mindset, inshallah, you knew that you would be the person that they want to refer. My children coined up their acronym called ABCD. Maknanya, kalau you, if you are in trouble, always be calling daddy. This is their ABC, uh, their 911. Uh, QCC, quickly call the person that you want to uh, find out on what are the issues. Sama ada it is going to be tire, uh, melet, uh, tire pamcit ke, tak cukup duit ke, everything. So, inshallah, we will become. So, with that, I think uh, we want to just highlight to you uh, later um, to go to our website if you want to get uh, our books. Uh, I will come back to you on the program that we will be having on a monthly basis shortly after this. So, let's uh, before that, there's a couple of things I want to uh, mention. Uh, number one is uh, the uh, books is available. Number two, uh, Jamila will send you the menti.com. And number three, I'm going to share with you shortly uh, before, uh, while giving the opportunity for some people to ask questions. So I'm opening the unmute yourself or send any question or, so that then we can then respond to any of it. Anyone? Uh, we have still more, a few more minutes uh, before we really end the, 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 the session. Fadal. Any comments? Parents need both. Yes, both my husband agree not to disagree. Yes, it's important because uh, whatever it is, 
you and your spouse are the one, this is like standing with two legs, firm on the ground. I know my children, if they come to me, they say that ayah will talk to Umi dulu. They go to Umi, they say Umi will talk to ayah dulu. I think that is a principle that all of us must adopt. So, uh, and, and this is where, uh, as what mentioned by Brother Muhammad Noni, living in the UK without immediate, I mean, you are the family to them. And to them, children, in the minute they look at you, they are testing you. Where you draw the boundary, how much and how far can they influence you? And sometimes they are smart enough to use the youngest as the ambassador to influence you. Because sometimes they see that we are tough on them at the elder one and we are quite soft with the younger ones. Mm. You have any comment here? Yeah, just to comment on, on uh, the question about how much time to be given to a child. Uh, yeah, uh, the gadget, the gadget time, right? I think mm. whatever we do, we have to look at things holistically because there are some parents I've observed they are so worried about the gadgets that the only time for them when they interact with the children is when they're upset with the child saying, ah, the lama mind too, you know, you have been spending too much time and all that. So look at it holistically. If you don't allow the child to play with the gadget, what are the things that he's supposed to do? For instance, one main issue that we have right now during the MCO is the physical fitness, mm, all right? Mm. How do we do that? How do we incorporate that in our daily life? It is possible that we can exercise at home and bearing in mind that physical activity has long-term implications on the mental health on the emotional well-being of not only our children but also ourselves so keep that in mind especially during this pandemic period because you know we parents cannot go out the kids cannot go out so there is a greater possibility of friction of conflict between us and the children so look again and again look at it holistically if you want to uh, give feedback, hey, you are spending too much time or this and that. Be wary of, you know, what is the balance at the end of the day? Does your child feel like you are, you know, growing a bigger distance between you and them? Are you becoming more like strangers or are you, is your relationship growing stronger? So always take note of that. And to be honest, you know, when we say that, the gadget is bad. Which part of it is bad and which part of it is good? Because there are so many resources that we can use online, right? Um, in Malaysia, we have alafquran.com, for instance, where you can uh, interact with the, the team on how to teach the kids the Quran. And we also use Oxford Owl to teach reading to our granddaughter. So lots and lots is at the end of the day, what type of games they are playing. So it's not a matter of black and white, all right? And you see, when you talk to your children, rather than saying, this is bad, this is good, this is sad, this is good. At the end of the day, as leaders, when we guide our children, we want to teach them how to think, all right? So rather than saying, this is bad, this is good. No, what makes you think this is bad. What makes you think this is good? What are your concerns as a parent? So they understand where you're coming from, right? So, I mean, at the age of six, seven, our kids are already starting to think of a lot of things. So it's a I'm good right. time to expand and stretch their thinking capability so that they are better able to make decisions for themselves whether we are there or not. I think, I think we, when we look at the Quran, Allah has shown that how Prophet Ibrahim at that early age was very intelligent. And I'm, I'm not, just because he's a prophet, we cannot say, oh, uh, because uh, he's a prophet, that's why he's intelligent. When he asked the father and the uh, uh, people, why are you worshipping this idol? What is the benefit? And so Nabi Ibrahim, but you look at kids, they are in nature, fitrah diorang, right? Allah shows them they know better how to handle the gadget even without you giving them the password. And you know, they can open things and you admit to yourself that certainly the younger ones know quite a lot of things. So we need to harness this thing and channel them, direct them. Because we knew that if we, 
if they can really unleash their potential, mashallah, you have a great khalif, a great a person uh, as you are raising, you are raising a leader from your own home. And, and, and when I was reading uh, from uh, Jake Kushairi talking about you know, how to handle the emotional needs, I think at the end of the day, uh, depending on how you and your spouse present yourself, uh, obviously the children have their own interpretation and preference. And sometimes it's not only all go to the mother, all go to the father, but some are very selective. Uh, the girls may go to the father, not necessarily to the mother on certain issues. So you play the complementary roles, mashallah. I mean, this is not about the bad cop and the good cop, you know, police buy it, police jahat. No, this is about we. Um, you see, I, I always felt that men, you cannot get a perfect wife. Because why? Not only the woman is imperfect, you are also imperfect. But the imperfection of these two gender ni, makes it a perfect marriage, alhamdulillah. Allah makes it in such a way that they complement one another. Rightly, we still have rough ages. There are certain things we may not agree, but let's not make it it's as a fundamental. And I, I, I wanted to highlight to you that the, the story about of emotion. It depends on how you can hand, you will be able to handle it and then be able to then cope, let others cope with that emotion. So the other thing about this lacking of suami atau ayah kiriman syurga. Now, uh, ayah ni akan ke syurga, insyaAllah kalau dia buat kerja uh, untuk syurga. Uh, you know, everybody has their own um, strength, but also their own uh, deficiency. And I, I'm a great believer that uh, insyaAllah, sometimes it takes time for them to make the changes, especially for men, they don't want to really listen to the wife because of the ego uh, and the macho of men. But believe me, mothers out there, you should not give up because one day, uh, yang akan mengubah hati-hati ayah yang uh, keras yang pada pandangan kita ni adalah Allah Subhanahu Taala. Sekeras-keras Umar Al Khattab, Allah ubah juga dia. Yeah, just a very quick addition to what uh, Fakri has mentioned just now about fathers. Actually, mothers are the gatekeepers. Yeah, we hold the key. Actually, and this is true because sometimes um, through our words and actions, we unwittingly, you know, we create that barrier between the father and children. Not all. Sometimes by giving negative feedback. So certain things like you know, saying in front of the children, in front of uh, your husband, you could say things like, you know, wow, your dad did such and such today. Because not all fathers had positive experiences growing up. And some fathers I know, I've heard reports of not knowing how to, uh, how to act as a father, how to carry themselves as a father, because they never had a father in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. So be, be, a, um, be there to support your husband so that, you know, he feels more confident on dealing with the children. Remember, mothers are gatekeepers. Yeah. Okay. And fathers are not assistant moms, by the way. Yeah. It's not a second mom. Not a second mom, not a third mom. Yeah. Fathers is just a father, but father also has that powerful role to demonstrate. Kalau you tak pernah pergi uh, dapur and tak pernah show your affection, cleaning up the dishes, or at least making some simple coffee or boiling or frying the eggs, then your children will grow up not wanting to have the wife because why should I? I've not seen my dad doing that. So I, that, that is to me, your, without even going to school, children will follow you, subhanallah. So I want to respond to Sister Sharifah yang minta this, uh, this slide on the, the proactive. So as I said earlier, uh, this is uh, something that uh, is available in the leadership book. Memma we put in. Uh, then the reason is because we want children, uh, parents to be aware the the ages and the stages of the children development as they move along and what are some of the ideas. Again, we can do this in a separate program and we focus and deep dive into some of the possible areas on why it is. But I want to, to quickly uh, wrap it up now. I wanted to share this uh, poster uh, that... Uh, of the program uh, because we, we believe that uh, this is the next 
uh, event that we can uh, you can participate and attend and uh, go through the website. So number one, the next one is every month we have a parenting talk, and um, this uh, May we have Father's Day, Bapa Ku Hero Ku, uh, uh, and now in June, uh, May was about um, violence, domestic violence. And uh, now we are going to talk about financial literacy because I think a lot of us, uh, children just know that money grows in ATM machine. Yeah. And now they still know that it's in the handphone because you can buy things just by scanning. So I think we need to teach them this concept of a domain yang Tuan Jamila mentioned, which is financial literacy. And I think it's, it's an important uh, uh, guide that we have to give uh, so that they, they don't abuse because when we die nanti our inheritance are not being <laughs> abused by them uh, what are the safety net the money diet and we brought in two very learned speakers uh, the ceo of little tauke madam empuyi and also azizi ali for those of you who knows him he is the one that did the uh, the man uh, the millionaire from another planet so so do come on Wednesday the 11th. It's, inshallah, we'll also record it. And you can look it at the, the YouTube, uh, Cool Mom Super Dad. But we also receive feedback from the youngsters who are just fresh graduate and young executive. Uh, they were grappling with their finances suddenly because, hey, nak bayar income tax, hey, how to pay zakat, and what is this SOXO, EPF, investment, cryptocurrency, there's a lot of range of finances which the school and university did not manage to teach them in depth. So this is the session, one and a half hour on Saturday uh, to allow uh, the panelists. So we had the blogger Suraya on Ringgit or Ringgit and then Jaslina Jerry on financial planning. And I, I'm, I'm sure that these children will benefit it's in English. So that bring your children to also listen so that then they know. Uh, what can they do with their money when they grow up? And I know I'm encouraging my grandchildren uh, who has started this concept of the three S, what uh, uh, whenever they receive an income, how much saving they make, how much spending are they going to do, and ma how much sadaqah are they going to give? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the guideline. And last but not least, up until August, uh, uh, we have already uh, one thing the parents, especially those with SPM children and all those things to guide uh, on their future career. Jobs are losing now, banks are closing in terms of certain positions. And I think uh, we want uh, all the parents to be equipped. How can they unleash the potential of the children? So I have the uh, Yayasan Kada Hazana ahead and she's bringing in lots of uh, top scholars and one thing to the what type of courses that they will take. Uh, so uh, that's from uh, YK, uh, Yayasan Khazana, Yayasan Hasana, and also Cik Sharizal. He's also the member of National Employment Council under the PM's office that look ahead what kind of jobs, what kind of occupation that children will have then. So last but not least, I mentioned about this. So again, oh, by the way, we are giving free delivery for the book. So you don't have to go to any bookshop now. Just uh, drop a message. And inshallah, uh, you would be able to enjoy the books then. I think we are reached towards the end of our session. And I know that there's a lot of things that we could have already said. We will definitely um, put in the recording into the YouTube. Yeah. Uh, so you can see that in the Facebook of me, Ahmad Fakri. Uh, Jamila will be posting it in the recording in the Facebook. Uh, I know uh, Puan Zawiya, the coordinator of MAIS and uh, I, I, uh, I, I see uh, certainly is interested that we have more uh, similar talk in future and inshallah watch the space there. Uh, Kat Zawiya, do you want to say anything Kat Zawiya, before we close uh, Tasbih Chukara oh. dan Surah Walas? Okay, thank you everybody who has registered and of course uh, it's a great presentation. Thank you Encik Ahmad Fakri. Puan Jamila, we'll see you soon in next topic, okay? Inshallah. Insha Insha All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for your support uh, in this. For well, everyone, uh, watch the space. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon run. Your children 
has a long way until Jannah that we will meet with them together, mashallah. But let not be the one, as what some of the saying, menggelincirkan perjalanan kita menuju ke syurga because of what we are doing now. May all of, of us, Allah give us the strength. May all of us that Allah mudahkan urusan kita. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Kau berkatikanlah majlis ini, Ya Allah. Kau sempurnakanlah urusan ini, Ya Allah. Kau tingkatkanlah keimanan, ketakwaan. Dan berikanlah petunjuk dan hidayah kepada kami, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, tabahkanlah hati kami, Ya Allah. Jadikanlah kami orang yang penyayang dan penyabar sebagai ibu bapa yang sentiasa mahukan anak-anaknya berjaya. Ya Allah, selamatkanlah mereka dunia dan akhirat, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, jauhilah mereka daripada tipu daya syaitan, Ya Allah. Dan manusia yang sentiasa ada kesihatan di, uh, di kalang uh, terhadap mereka. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, kembalikanlah semula semangat Islam kepada anak-anak kami untuk beribadat dan menjadi seorang Islam yang akan bertanggungjawab sebagai ketua, sebagai pemimpin yang akan menjadikan ummah kita ni ummah yang terbaik. Insya Allah yang baik itu datang daripada Allah Subhanahu Taala dan yang buruk itu adalah kelemahan saya dan Puan Jamila yang perlu diperbaiki. Jangan lupa klik menti.com untuk beri pandangan dan juga feedback tuan-tuan supaya kita boleh perbaiki majlis ini. Dengan itu saya sudahi dengan wabillahi taufik wal hidayah wassalamu alaikum warahmatullah wabarakatuh waalaikumussalam azawiya you can stay on a few minutes just to check on the thing beautiful oh but i have been to a lot so stop it again thank you